Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesdays at 2, or in this case, 2.09. Had some tech issues. Um, the 5 Minute Museum. I'm excited to be here with you. I am actually broadcasting from my own sweet little home. And I'm broadcasting here for two reasons. One is because um, we're talking about the piece behind me, which is called um, The Old Home Place. And the other reason is because uh, John Tilford and I, John Daniel Tilford, the curator of collections, my colleague, has um, we've decided to to broadcast uh, from from our homes um, for the next several weeks through the holiday season, and we thought that would be a fun thing to do, um, both because we both enjoy collecting and uh, it would also be practical frankly, but um, we really wanted to explore what it's like to, to collect and um, to explore that at home. So you'll, you'll see us at our houses. Um, the Old Home Place, this was painted in acrylic by a fellow named Gary B. Um, not giving his last name to protect him. He is currently serving uh, a sentence at Walker State Penitentiary um, in Rock Spring, Georgia. And he is one of many um, men who are exhibiting artwork currently at Oglethorpe University Museum of Art um, <clears throat> in an exhibition uh, sponsored by Heartbound Ministries, which does incredible, important, really, really um, heartfelt work um, with people who are incarcerated, incarcerated populations and their families doing a lot of outreach to help the prisoners themselves, to give them um, uh, something very meaningful to do to help their rehabilitation and to um, also help them stay connected to their families. So all of the sales of these paintings, and I will tell you folks, we have 52 paintings on view right now through December 20th. We have sold all but eight. So 100% of the proceeds are going back to Heartbound to the Little Readers program. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm, I've, I've mentioned it in many videos, but please, please support Heartbound um, they have many, many things they do. They work in every single prison in this state, and they're doing very, very good work. So Gary B. painted this. He said, there's a little quote from him. Uh, most of the artists give a quote. This picture reminds me of my childhood days on my grandparents' old home place and fishing in the lake. So I chose to talk about this one for several reasons. One is that uh, I also grew up um, where there are gently rolling hills in a beautiful body of water nearby the Delaware, and it made me think of my own home. And I think the way that he's crafted it, um, he is clearly a self-taught artist who has painted this very lovingly. He's also put a, a kind of a varnish over it to give it an older look, an older appeal. And he's done something quite remarkable, and that is to um, and a number of these artists have done this, to create the frame. They don't have access, most of the prisoners do not have access to the wood shop, which is off-site. Apparently you need special privileges, special permission, and of course, you know, dangerous tools, right? So what he's done, and what some of the artists have done in the show, is to work with um, cardboard and water and glue and to form it into, um, into something that looks wood-like and then do a faux finish on it. So that, I thought, was also kind of remarkable. Um, Self-taught artists, autodidactic artists, um, probably, arguably, the most famous one, you may uh, know her by a different name, Anna Mary Robertson, was Grandma Moses. Um, but certainly there are self-taught artists um, throughout history uh, who have contributed incredible works of art. Um, Thornton Dial, Bill Trailer, there's so many. Um, Horace Pippin, Howard Finster, of course. Um, Bill Trailer's work I got to know a little bit a few years ago through an artist that we have in our collection, Alejandra Aguilera, who is fascinated by Trailer's work. And Bill Trailer is an interesting artist who um, only started drawing and painting in his last 10 years of life. And he, the arc of his life is remarkable from being born in slavery in Alabama through emancipation, Jim Crow, to extremes of poverty and illness, and to this amazing body of work right at the end of his life. So d just one example, one example of many, many, many artists who are self-taught. Others that you may know a little bit better, um, Vincent van Gogh, very, very little formal training. Uh, Henri Rousseau, um, also no formal training to my knowledge. Frida Kahlo began art school, but of course she had a 
serious accident, which also informed how everything in her life and her work. Um, so largely self-taught. And uh, also, you know, it, it bears mentioning that self-taught or autodidactic artists um, don't necessarily all paint in a kind of a crude uh, or less refined style. Someone like Henri Rousseau was able to achieve incredibly refined and beautiful, uh, really fully realized style uh, on his own, so through his own study. I wanted to note too that our friends at the High Museum right now have an exhibition curated two exhibitions curated by um, the uh, self-taught um, uh, the curator of self-taught and folk art Katie Gentleson. Dr. Gentleson has two shows right now one is called Gate Crashers the rise of the self-taught artist in America and the other is Really Free the radical art of Nellie May Rowe. So the first is only on view through December 11th um, we're going to see it my class and I this Friday I'm very excited and the other is on view through January 9th. So in any event, we will be coming live, hopefully it will be two next time, uh, live um, with John Daniel Tilford, who will speak to you. Uh, and for the next month or so, it will be the home edition. Have a great, great week. And thanks so much for tuning in.